Hi Martin, thank you so much for joining me today at the Smart Lab Exchange. Could you start off by telling me a little bit about your role and responsibilities at Syngenta? I have the job title of data scientist and I sit within a group called Data Sciences. Um, and though that's a group that sits within the IS organisation, uh, I guess it could equally well sit within the R&D organisation because it actually straddles, straddles both of them. So there's been a sort of recognition that the role of data isn't just storage and retrieval. It's a corporate asset. Uh, there's an awful lot that we can do with it uh, to really exploit it. And I see that as you know, one of the main aspects of my role. And what would you say are the major challenges you're currently facing in your role as a lead data scientist? There's always a tension between the need to innovate and the sort of speed that goes with that and the role for data governance. So that's the, the standards, um, making sure that we can uh, not only generate the data but then actually get it back afterwards when we need to and that might be several years later. So um, I quite often get involved as a uh, broker, I guess, in uh, those discussions to try to find a pragmatic way where we don't slow down in innovation, but we actually also secure that data in such a form that we can use it not only at the time, but also later, often for things that we've never expected to use it for. At this year's exchange, you will be participating in the panel discussion debating data management. Why is it so important for agrochemical companies to address the issue of handling scientific data? We generate a huge amount of data. Um, and not only is the data volume huge, also its diversity is huge. So just to give you an idea, we have uh, data that comes from our, uh, our laboratories, which um, is very um, machine generated, uh, very uh, homogeneous. Um, and the uh, comes from outputs of machines which measure to very high numbers to very high precision. At the other extreme we have data generated in glass houses and out in the field where it's all very manual. There's a lot of interpretation uh, and quite often we want to hold comments against that. So uh, data is very diverse um, so it's quite a challenge to actually uh, bring all that together um, particularly when there are so many different ways of describing the same thing that you're looking at. So um, uh, one of the key challenges for us is to make sure that we have enough standardisation in the data uh, that we can actually say that these two pieces of the data are actually talking about the same thing. And Martin, I understand that data organisation and semantic querying are important considerations for you at Syngenta. What are the options available to you in the next 12 months to address these issues? So semantics is becoming increasingly important. Um, it's widely recognised that even though we as a, a global organisation all ostensibly speak the same language, the subtleties in the interpretation of that when it's applied to data can vary significantly. So in a, um, a, an analysis I did fairly recently, we looked at one of our key concepts, which is the concept of corn, very important in the agrochemical industry and we have at least six different meanings of what corn actually means. So in data terms, we can't say that because it is a piece of data is about one interpretation of corn, therefore it also applies to any others. So that's just an example. We have many, many others. And semantically being able to work out which aspect um, of a particular term you're looking at is actually extremely important to us. And finally, how do you see laboratory informatics evolving generally in the next few years? And what will this mean for your company? I see particularly the richness of the data stream um, uh, um, increasing significantly. So uh, I guess in the past we've dealt very much with numbers and character codes and the like, but I'm expecting to see much more in terms of images, so very rich data, and also video. Um, so just as an example, if we are looking at the effect of a chemical on an insect, um, recording whether it's alive or dead is just a number. Uh, but if we're looking at maybe sublethal effects, uh, that's maybe something that we would actually want to capture by uh, time lapse photography, for instance. So for in that sort of thing suggests that our data is going to be much richer, uh, therefore more of a challenge to hold, more of a challenge to interpret, and also more of a challenge to bring back when it's actually needed.